I'll give you a quick peek at Murphy. Hello and welcome. So big changes are coming to Canva's photo editor, um, specifically on April 22nd, the old editor is going away and a brand new one is taking over. So we're going to talk through what this all means, what you should be seeing or what you will be seeing and uh, what's going on, what you might lose and what you will definitely gain in this. So let's get started. Hello, how is everybody doing? Hope you had a good week. All right, it's time to talk about one of my favorite tools and that, as you know, if you've been around here for any time, is Canva. Um, so if you use Canva a lot for editing your photos or if you're using a lot of photos in your Canva arts, uh, then you're gonna wanna listen up because there are some changes coming. Personally, I think it's good news, but your mileage may vary. Um, but basically the summary is that it's time to say goodbye to the old Canva editor um, and hello to a new one that is going to give us some new tools because they're always, you know, growing and changing um, and some shifts of tools that you're used to. And I'll talk about what that means in a minute um, and how to make a nice and smooth transition into this new world. Sorry, my doggo has been sleeping quietly and now decided to wake up because that's how we roll here. All right. So if you're hearing about Canva for the first time, no problem. We're going to get everybody on the same page here. So excuse you. <laughs> Canva um, is a fantastic free and paid um, online design tool. Um, people are using it to create all kinds of visit vis visuals bleh, um, from social media graphics, presentations, posters, websites, videos. Uh, like It is a multi-purpose tool that does many things well, um, despite what, you know, some snobby folks might say. You can actually do really nice things in Canva. Um, but best of all, it's known for its user-friendly interface, drag and drop functionality, and amazing templates. And all of that is available for free. And then there are paid elements that you can add to your free creations. And there's also a paid level monthly uh, membership um, that will give you all of the bells and whistles as a part of your program. So you don't have to worry about, oh, do I have access to this? Do I have access to that? You'll have access to everything, which is really amazing. And I won't kid you, it's a lot of fun. There's a little art therapy involved every time I open up my Canva. Um, now, the update that we're talking about uh, specifically today is uh, focused on the photo editing features. Um, but, you know, even if you've never seen Canva before, this is a good introduction to the types of things you can do in it. Um, and you won't know what's changed because, <laughs> well, that's what we talk about because you're new to it. Um, and so there is, as always, there's a link in the description. Um, if you'd like to go and check out Canva, feel free. Um, it's not an affiliate thing. Uh, they drop that. Um, but it doesn't matter because I recommend things all the time that I rely on, that I know that my friends and uh, clients have used and have found very helpful. So this is definitely on that list. Alrighty, so let's get into the meat of things. Actually, before I do that, I should introduce myself. So hello, my name is Kathleen. I'm here as your tech coach. Short version of the story is technology is my day gig. I design software for a living. It's also my hobby. So I'm in it 24 seven. I'm fascinated by the possibilities and the things that go on. And the fact that it's always changing for me is good news. I realize that everybody agrees with that, but that's my point of view. Um, and because of that, my friends, family, neighbors, coworkers tend to come to me when they have a question, when they're looking for advice, if they've got a problem. And over the time, they've recommended me out to their friend, family, neighbors, and coworkers. So that made me realize not everybody has something, somebody to talk to. So that's why we're here. Every week we come and I always bring a topic to talk about, but you are always welcome to come and hang out in the chat uh, while I'm live. Or if you're watching this on the replay, go ahead into the comments and uh, let me know either, you know, questions about the topic or even off topic is fine. That That's good too. If you want to reach out, you can always reach me at yourtechcoach.com. There's a contact form there. So if you have a question, whatever, I can go ahead and post that there. I also do consults, so you can sign up for those there as well. Okay. Now that that's done, let's keep going. All right. So as of uh, April 22nd, 2024, which is not, it's like 10 days away from when I'm recording this, um, Canva is going to be um, I think they're referring to it as streamlining. Um, they're streamlining their photo editing, which basically what they're saying is the, the legacy photo editor is going away um, and everybody is going to be moved over to the new version. 
that is everybody. So th this is not a kind of opt-in, opt-out kind of thing. This is everybody needs to know that this is going to happen. Um, you don't have to do anything. It will happen automatically. Um, and there will be some adjustments, but I wouldn't panic because most of your favorite features are there. And of course, they're always adding new things. Um, so what do I mean by that? What you will probably notice if you've been using this for a while is some of the tools that you have been using to edit your photos. I'm sorry, I just really distracted me. Shh. Um, sorry, some of the, the tools that you've been using to edit your photos have come from third party. So that Canva provides a bunch of functionality and they also let select third parties make their functionality available as well. Um, and so a lot of the things for the photo editing, particularly for me, like I've tended to use third party tools because there are some really cool things there. What's happening is that they have assimilated some functionality. That doesn't mean they assimilated the third party. They assimilated some of the function functionality. So some of the stuff that used to be a third party tool is now a Canva tool direct. So the good news about that is you don't have to worry about it going away because that can happen with third party apps. Um, some of the other third party apps may not make it in the transition. This tends to happen when things change, but also this tends to happen at the end of the contracts. So what they do is they make a contract with one of the third parties to say that, you know, for this period, you're, you can have your tool in our you know uh, application. Um, and then that either needs to be renewed or it will be dropped. Um, so I think some of it is a timing thing. Like some of the stuff is going to go away just because it's time for it to go. Other is because Canva has now replaced it with their own functionality. Um, and some just maybe don't want to move to the new tool. Like, you know, there's, there's all kinds of negotiations and conversations happening. So yes, you may notice some of your stuff going away. Generally when that happens, they find a similar replacement. So I would not panic too much, but if you do have concerns, reach out to their support team. They are amazing. Okay. So with all of that out of the way, um, Let's talk about some of the things that are sticking around that I know a lot of people use. So for example, things like the autofocus, um, which is a really cool way of taking a fairly plain photo and giving it some interest and, and depth. Um, shadows are sticking around, stuff like that. You know, like the stuff that you're expecting to be able to use is going to stick around. And of course the magic edit, which has been a thing inside of Canva for a while that just continues to grow and get better. So that will definitely be there for you. So you can use that to, you know, edit, change, remove parts, clean things up, um, completely take one image and make it look like something else. It's, it's the kind of thing I highly recommend that people go in and just quote unquote play with test drive, um, because it's the kind of tool that the more you work with it, the more ideas you get, um, which is great way to like kind of jumpstart some creativity because sometimes you're just staring at it. You don't know what to do, but if you start to play with these things, you're like, Hey, this is cool. And then I could do this. Um, another cool tool is the uh, text grab. So you, if there's text in an image, um, you can go ahead and you can grab that and you can edit it. And it mostly works. And of course, you know, depending on the lighting, the angle of the photo, you know, there, there is a success spectrum for this kind of thing. Um, but it is a really cool way to do that kind of stuff. Um, and a lot easier when it works, um, than having to like, you know, paint over the one and then, you know, type the text and adjust the angles and all that kind of stuff yourself. So really nice. Um, the background remover, you will have that. Um, it's got, you know, even more filters on it, uh, better controls, better adjustments on it. So that one in particular is a particular, is a big upgrade in my book. So now you're saying, okay, well, how do I know what version I've got? Uh, how do you know if I, how do I know if I'm using the right one? Um, basically, uh, if you're seeing like magic edit and the features I just talked about, they are, are pre you're pretty good to go, but there's another way you can tell. And so let's go ahead and let's see now, this is the time when I'm going to do a demo at nine times out of 10, this is when. <laughs> I find out that they've already flipped the switch um, because two hours ago it worked, but that doesn't mean it'll work now, but let's give it a try. Okay. Let's see. Do we, we got the right one. Let's get this out of the way. All right. So everything that I've been talking about applies to Canva, um, no matter how you use it. So free paid, uh, whether you're using it in a browser, when you're using it on a mobile device, whether you downloaded the app onto your computer, it, it's across the board. Some of the functionality may change depending on whether you're using a free or a paid, but overall that is what we are talking about. Um, and let's see if we can get this up. Oh, that's not working. Um, down gamers paradise, uh, pointed out that, um, uh, 
this is pretty handy because what, what was it? another reason of oh, canva is so awesome yes absolutely i totally agree let me see if i can get this to come up this time i like to give credit for the okay so that's not going to work <laughs> my apologies um but you know that is one of the things i love about canva is the fact that they are constantly growing and expanding it it's still not working there it is see i knew i could get that to work there we go um, so yes, it is awesome. It has a lot of power. They, there's a lot of power just in the free tool. So please don't hesitate to give that a try. Some people are like, oh, if it's free, it can't be any good. They give a lot in the free version. So I do highly recommend checking it out. Um, but yes, I do. I end with everybody around here knows I, I love my Canva. All right. So this one, what are we doing? We are in the browser version here, but like I said, um, this all, everything I'm going to show you and talk about does apply to all the different versions. And in order to see anything, we have to be working on something. So let's just start a blank. And now let's stay where we are. Thanks so much. All right. And let's just go ahead and get an image because you're still not seeing anything here. Let's do city. And here we go. So just if you're new here, so anything that's got the little crown on it, like you see here, um, when you hover over it, it says pro. So this would be a paid image. Now I'm on a free account right now, but that doesn't mean that I can't like bring this in here because if I decided that I wanted to use this, then I could go ahead and pay for just the image itself and use that. So when you bring in a free image, it does have the watermark on it and all that kind of stuff, but you can use it, you can position it, all that kind of stuff. And then if you decide to keep it, you can come in here and you can pay for the, the one image, which is really amazing. But so that it's not distracting, we'll use a free image. Okay, so we've got this and I'm just gonna make it big. Okay, so there we go. We've got this for our background now. Interesting, I think already doctored photo, but that's fine. All right, so in order to get to the editing tools, you're going to click on the photo and then up here in the right hand, I'm sorry, left hand corner, uh, there's this edit photo option. So if you click on that, you'll see that you've got the editing features. And sure enough, let me just look here. Okay. <laughs> I was gonna say, they took away the announcement, but no, the announcement is down here at the bottom. So you're using the new photo editor. So by default, it already has put me in the new photo editor. Um, the old experience of related third-party apps won't be available um, until 2022. If I prefer the old one, I can switch back. So that's how you can tell which one you're using. And you know what? Let's just go to the old one just for giggles right now. So again, you click on this and then you've got these options. And so you'll see over here, this looks different. They highlight the change. So I'm, again, I'm in the legacy version now. So this does bump it up here. It talks about the, the permissions also. Um, and then they talk about the new editor that's coming, but you'll see that the sign is different. It's got different options. It's the filters are laid out, you know, differently. So if you're paying attention, you will be able to tell which one you're in. Um, and like, these are some of the third party apps that, you know, I've played with over time or that they're recommending to me. But again, for the purpose of this conversation, we're going to stay in the new one. And again, you see all the things that are a little bit different here, right? Okay. So you've also been getting um, notifications and email and that kind of stuff too. Uh, so you have probably already heard about this or they've already probably reached out to you, but maybe you didn't open the email, whatever. The, but that, that's the situation. And there are, like I pointed out, the on-screen um, notifications. Now those will go away, I'm assuming, after the 22nd or some time after the 22nd because they will have moved everybody over to that. Um, the great news is anything that you've done in the legacy app all those edits, changes, uh, additions that you've made, any of the tools that you've used, all of those results will still be there. They're not going to disappear. You're not going to lose anything. Um, and, you know, once you're transitioned over, you can continue to edit on those. It's just that you're not going to necessarily see exactly the same third party ones that you've seen, but it's really going to be pretty seamless. Um, I've been switching back and forth for a while just to see what it felt like and see how different it felt. And uh, to be honest, I don't know that I would have noticed if they hadn't pointed it out. So um, the other thing that I want to recommend to everybody is to go ahead and do this, right? You can go ahead right now and you can switch between the legacy and the new one. Give it a try. Start getting comfortable with it. Start checking it out. 
Um, it is a super friendly tool, and it's the kind of thing, you know, if you make a mistake, it's not the end of the world. You can either undo it or just start over. Um, so don't be afraid to try things. Don't be afraid to bring your own photos into it. So you can absolutely use the stuff that is inside of Canva, and you can also bring in your own. So if there's an image that you want to use um, and you're on the free, you can go ahead and bring in your own photo. You don't have to buy one of the photos um, if you've got something that'll work for you or if you can take a photo that'll work for you. So don't be afraid to experiment. Give it a try, play with the different things and, and see how it works. So just as an example, let's go take a quick look at a couple of things in the new. There we go. So if we go here, um, let's see, what was something I was playing with the other day? So the image upscaler, that's a fun one. I think that's a third party one. Yeah. So anytime you go into something that is still a third party tool, you'll get this information about it. It'll tell you what the name of it is, who created it, a little bit about it, and then you'll have to give permission to use it. Um, so you can go ahead and check that kind of stuff out. There we go. Uh, you've got your background remover. So let's, let's try the background remover in this. Um, oh, <laughs> that's a paid tool too. Okay. I'm trying to stay with the free ones. I, I should have, see, I, my, I, for my business, I have a paid account. Um, so yeah, I should pay more attention to that kind of stuff. Let's see. Let's look at, find something interesting. Oh, let's play with the autofocus. That's not, yeah, that's a, okay. So by default, the autofocus changed it. And, and this is, this gives it that like toy feel, um, like, you know, it, when it plays with the, the focus on it. So by default, it's not, it starts down here at the bottom, but you can come over here and adjust these. And I highly recommend that when you are trying these different things to not just accept the default settings, but go ahead and give it a try. So for example, we can adjust the uh, blur intensity so we can make it blurrier or less blurry, depending on what you're going for. I'm going to go about here, but this one is particularly fun. I, I've lost a lot of time on this one. So focus position, like I said, right now it's down here at the bottom, but you can change this and you'll see how it goes purple. That's letting you know what area is going to be in focus. So if I want to go something like maybe midway, now the bottom and the top are blurry and the center part is now in focus. And if I'm like, yeah, no, I want something a little farther back. You can just keep going. And that purple section will just keep moving. Just again, so that you can kind of dial in what it is that you want it to look like. And if you change your mind, you can always bring it back to the front and do that type of thing. So that's just one quick example of the types of thing that you can do. Um, we can go ahead and play with a couple others, but that's the basic concept is you click on your um, photo. It gives you the edit photo option. You click on that and then you've got all the stuff down the side that you can test drive and play and, and see what works for you, what, what matches, whatever it is that you're trying to shoot for um, and just Try it, rearrange it, give it a shot. And then if you feel like you've got it, great. If not, then you can just remove it and you can go ahead and start with something different. So let's go ahead and do another one. Because they're fun. Uh, let's see. What else have we got here? Dual tone, shadows. I don't know that shadows would do much here. Maybe, maybe not. Um, there are predefined filters. And like for something like this, you can go and see more here. So if you wanted to give it that old timey photo look, you could try that one. And again, you can adjust the intensity, right? So that's at full intensity, but you could bring it back. If you just wanted to add a little undertone to it, you could do that. Uh, let's see, we can go this way. Let's see, is there anything that catches my eye? Let's find something, oh, mist. Eh. The title was better. So this gives everything sort of a turquoise overtone or undertone. Uh, let's just try one more. Let's see here. Oh, we can go uh, black and white. We can go noir. Ooh, there we go. And again, you can adjust it. So like if you're just looking to add a little bit more black tone to it, you can, or you can go completely black and white. So you can play with this as much as you like. You can make it really funky. Heat wave. Let's see what else we got here. This is all kinds of color pop stuff. Uh, amethyst, there you go. And again, you can dial that way up. You can bring it way down. It all depends on what it is you're looking to achieve. Um, and like I said, there are these, you know, other ones, the background remover, it works really well, but that is a paid tool. Um, and then we've got all these other apps that you can play with. Pixify is also a third party one. Um, so that gives it a Pixify look. So it kind of makes it look like, you know, old school, kind of like Nintendo or Atari kind of art. Um, all that kind of good stuff right there for you. So 
there they will be continuing to add to this um to tweak what they've given us um, and they'll just keep adding new features too now some of them will be paid some of them will be free so you'll just have to keep an eye on things um, but there are resources available. So there is a community out there of Canva users um, that you can go and hang out. That link is in the description, but there's also us, right? So you can come and you can hang out. I've done several videos. I've done a couple videos on Canva over time, more than a couple. Um, so feel free to jump in the comments if you've got any recommendations, if you found something cool, if you have any questions, you can go ahead and do all that kind of stuff in there. So I'm curious. Are you excited about these changes? A little nervous, a mix of both. Let me know in the com comments. Um, let me know, you know, what your concerns are. If you have major concerns, I strongly recommend that you go and you reach out to the Canvas support team. They are very helpful. And here's the thing. If you like something, don't like something, want something, the only way for them to know is for them, for you to tell them, right? Screaming into the void, not helpful. Contact the support team means it might get on a list someday. So I highly recommend that you very, you know, politely because they're, they're, tr they're there trying to help you even when you're frustrated. Um, do, you know, reach out to them and let you, let them know what you're thinking. Um, they are very, very open to that kind of stuff. Alrighty. And um, as always, you know, if you have any questions or comments, you can always reach out here to your techcoach.com. Um, I'm happy to help with what I can. You know, I don't work for Canva, so I don't have their, <laughs> their ear. Um, but, you know, if you're looking for a recommendation, if you're looking for a tip, um, do feel free to go ahead and reach out. Um, also, if you want a consult, you can go ahead and sign up for one of those there. Um, if you'd like to get on the mailing list, if you'd like to know what's coming down the pike, um, you can go to yourtechcoach.com forward slash mailing list. I don't sell my list to anybody. You're only going to hear from me. And that's about, you know, once a week, maybe for maybe five or six times a month, if there's something else going on, but you know, mostly it's just every week I let you know what the topic's going to be. Um, for you folks that power through all the way to the end, you know, I appreciate it. You know, I love you. Um, and yeah, it really does help the channel. Um, I do have a couple of extra little tips for you about the, the, uh, photo editor. Um, one is that when this change happens and, or if you're starting new with it, um, when you go in, make sure that you try the stuff, right? Just like take 10 minutes one day, throw any random photo in there and try all the things that catch your eye, just so that you've got that in your head what it does, what it looks like, what it feels like, um, because that may be helpful to you later on when you're in more of a time crunch and you're trying to get something out the door. So don't be afraid to experiment. Don't be afraid to try things out. It's really fun. Um, I also highly recommend that you do work with the magic edit tool. Um, and I can show you where that is. Um, let that go away. So the magic edit tool is over here, right? The Canva assistant is over here. And didn't I take that down? There we go. Let's try that again. Okay. So it's over in the corner here and you can come in here and you can do magic, right? Like it's got a bunch of different things in it that you can go ahead and play with. Um, you can also, when you are in working in the photo editor, you see that like you've got the magic stuff, like the magic edit, the grab, um, the expand. Now these are paid. Most of them are paid and the magic edit looks like it's not. So you can actually change something in the background. So let's see, let's, let's brush over this. And say, okay. And then describe your edit. Add, uh, seagulls. How about that? Let's see what happens. Okay. And we say generate and it will add stuff into the photo that did not exist before. I have no idea what we're going to get. It's, it's the, you know, it's an AI kind of thing. Um, all right, well, we got a seagull. Let's try that one. There we go. Oh, but this, this little head got cut off. Oh, that was sad. So yeah, it's AI. You might have to do it a couple of times. Um, but it is another piece of functionality that is, you know, something to try did not apply. I, I probably didn't do a big enough area. But anyway, you get the idea. It is just something else to try. It's something else new. And I do recommend going in um, to try it. Like I said, th there's a lot of different magic tools. So you can replace the background. You can remove unwanted objects. So that's just removing something that's in the way. Um, or you can transform your image by, you know, doing like I did and just like try to add, ask the AI to add something into an area that you've highlighted. Um, I have had 
really good successes with that. And I've had some ones that just made me laugh. Either way, I call it a win. Um, again, I, I do recommend as a bonus that, you know, if you are going in and you're editing anything in Canva, but particularly your images, your uh, photos, don't just take the filters as is. Play with them. Try different ones. Try different combinations. Experiment with the sliders um, and fine tune things to make it your own. It, it, it It's the difference between, oh, it looks like that might have been done in Canva and, oh, that's cool. I wonder how they did that. Um, and the other tip that I have for you is to learn the keyboard shortcuts. So Canva has lots of keyboard shortcuts. And if you are a keyboard warrior like me, um, it's a really good way to speed up your workflow. Um, so I, there is, again, there's a link in the description that you can go and check those out. But I do recommend that if you like to work off of your keyboard, um, that you go and check that out. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for reaching out, re for reaching out, for coming <laughs> and checking this out. Uh, like I said, feel free to reach out here if you uh, have any questions, comments, ideas for the show. But best show ideas come from you folks. I won't even kid you on that. Um, I hope that you will go and check this out. Maybe spend some time in the next you know, 10 days if you catch this video before they make the change um, to compare and contrast what you have to what, what it's going to. And then let us know what you find, what, you know, post in the comments. Let us know what's working for you, what's not, what you're hoping to see. Um, and we will see you again next week. I come here every week with a uh, topic. Uh, I hope you'll be able to come. It's every Friday at 8 p.m. Um, but always you can catch these on replay. So if you can't make it live, don't worry about it. Uh, the content is always here for you. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Have a good one and we will see you next time. Bye. Thank you.